Good afternoon. Thank you for, for being here. I want to welcome you to the celebration service. And I say that specifically and on purpose, the celebration service for the homegoing of Mrs. Linda McGalliard. Uh, again, thank you for coming. And, and I know you're here to show Larry your love and your care and your support of him. And he said, Pastor, we've been out so long from church, nobody's going to even know who we are. No one's going to be there, and uh, you sure we should do this? Uh, thank you. I, uh, about two minutes ago, I looked at him, and I said, hey, look in there. And you said, nobody's coming. And, um, and on behalf of Larry and the rest of the family, thank you so very much for being here. That says a whole lot. I often say, at times like these, uh, you, you're not sure what to say, but your presence here says a whole lot. And uh, thank you on behalf of the family and on, on his behalf. Um, Larry did ask that uh, you not mourn for Linda, that uh, she is not one who has no hope, but that you celebrate her deliverance from suffering and pain. And that's what we're here for. No longer is she bound to a disease-ridden body and a dementia-racked mind. Today, she is with her Savior in paradise. Free of suffering. That, that picture is a, was taken just about uh, just one year ago. <laughs> is that your wedding picture? No? What, what, okay, just a, just a, well, a little long, a, lo a little longer than one year ago. And, uh, but uh, he said, Linda was not a picture person. She wouldn't ever get her picture made. I said, uh, can, you, can you get me a recent picture? No. And... Uh, but no longer is she in that body, no longer is she having to deal with a mind that was no longer working properly. She, today she is free of suffering and pain, free of the cares of this world. She is alive in Jesus Christ. And one day at Christ's return, Linda, along with all of those who have gone on, that body will rise and it will be transformed in the twinkling of a moment. And it will be transformed into a glorious new body capable of living for all of eternity in heaven. Then we which are alive and remaining, we shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and we all together will live forever with our God who loved us so much that he put his son on the cross to pay for our sin. That's right, hallelujah. Praise the Lord for that. Would you bow with me in prayer? Lord, thank you for the glorious hope of the very real place called heaven. Lord, we remember your words to us that you've gone to prepare a place for us and that one day you will come again and take us to that place. Lord, and we do know that we would have no hope had you not come and Lord, you lived a sinless life and you, you lived a, a perfect life. Then, Lord, you died a sacrificial death. You died in our place, and, but you didn't stay dead, Lord. You rose again. You conquered death, hell, and the grave. And you've given us hope of that as well. Lord, you're the first fruits of our resurrection. And, Lord, we, your disciples, the believers in you, we are eternally grateful for the grace that has been shown to us by you coming to take on the likeness of human flesh. Lord, to dwell in live amongst us for 33 years. And Lord, for the joy that was set before you, the salvation and the eternal life and the resurrection of all the redeemed, Lord, you endured the cross, you despised the shame, and you purchased our redemption by your atoning death. For that, we are eternally grateful. Father, we ask that by your Holy Spirit, Larry would receive comfort and a peace that passes all understanding. Might he know and feel that this church family loves and cares for him. Father, I pray that today we weep with him as he weeps. We celebrate with him as he celebrates. And we glory in the Lord as he glories in the Lord. We ask that you meet with us, we pray. And it's in Jesus' holy and precious name we ask. And the church said, Amen. Amen. We're going to sing a song together. Usually we stand and sing. Um, but I'm going to let you be seated and sing so long as you don't just 
sit there, but that you also sing with me the great hymn, Hymn of the Faith, that reminds us where we would be without the amazing grace of our God. Let's sing the song, Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed through many dangers toils and snares I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. And when Ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. What a great reminder that is. Amen? Amen, amen. I want to share with you a little bit about Linda McGalliard. I got to spend some time earlier this week talking with Larry, and I wanted to share a little bit of some things probably most of you didn't know, or uh, maybe you thought you knew something of Linda. Linda McGalliard was born Linda Cox on March the 5th, 1947, in Eureka, California. And uh, she is survived by a brother, Dennis, and a sister, Janice. Found out Larry and Linda have been married for 35 years. Larry and Linda, um, I always like to find out how a couple meets. And so I asked Larry, I said, how'd you all meet? He said, well, we, Pastor, we lived in the same apartment complex. He said, one night I came home from work, and um, he said, I saw a woman with a hood up on her car. And, uh, of course, in his southern chivalry, he went over to help this damsel in distress. You know, right? What well, turns out, this damsel was not in distress. As a matter of fact, she was doing a full tune-up on a Pontiac Grand Prix right there in the parking lot. She didn't need any help at all. <laughs> That's how they met. And, uh, of course, they began to see one another back and forth as they would travel from their buildings to their cars. They would run into one another there in the parking lot. And, well, before long, you know, the love bug bit. And about a year later, they were married. Um, you might guess, I asked Larry, I said, what was Linda's career? Automotive industry. Uh, among other automakers, she worked for a Pontiac dealership in, uh, in the sales department. 
and also in the office with all of the paperwork, you know, that has to be signed when you, when you buy a car. And so she was very apt around an automobile. I think there's actually someone here uh, who worked with Linda in that, there he is right there, uh, worked with Linda there at the Pontiac dealership uh, so many years ago. Thank you for making the drive over here, sir. Oh, you're here now. Well, thank you for coming over then. <laughs> uh, huh? Okay. Um, Linda worked in the automotive industry. After they retired, uh, Larry and Linda enjoyed traveling, found out for 13 years. They were full-time RVers, and they traveled and all over the country, and they saw and they enjoyed meeting a lot of different people at the different parks, RV parks that they would go to there. And uh, he said mostly they stayed in North Dakota and Montana, but they, they would work at different camp grounds and different things and enjoyed that after retirement. Linda also enjoyed the great outdoors, and so they often went out uh, camping together. Um, I also found this out. This is interesting. Not surprised uh, after I learned about Linda working on cars. Uh, they both uh, got their CDL commercial driver's license, and after retirement, they, they team drove semi-trucks uh, back and forth around across the country for a year and a half, two years. And uh, that, I thought that was kind of interesting there. Of course, now for the last several years, uh, Larry and Linda have lived here in the Fortuna Foothills. Larry, I remember, and I cherish the day, when it was during, I don't know what day of the week, but it was during the work week, that uh, you walked in the front door there and uh, walked into the office and asked to speak to the pastor that you had some questions about, about this church. And I... Uh, I'll always remember that day, and I cherish that day, and I thank God for that day, and what a joy it's been to know you and Miss Linda. Folks, Larry now enters a new chapter of life as a widower. Ahead of him, he faces long days of loneliness. By the way, Larry, I do want you to know this, you're not alone. There's a group of people here that love you dearly, and you don't have to go through this chapter by yourself. Um, we're happy to be able to be a blessing to you any way we can. A wonderful church family. I'm glad to have your family here. And um, I asked Larry a while ago, before you all got here, he was here. He said, um, I said, how you doing? And he said, I walked in the door there. He said, felt like home. Felt like home. We love you, sir. We love you. I asked Larry if it would be all right, and he gave me permission. I'd like to open the floor now for anyone here who would like to maybe share some remembrances or maybe just offer some words of encouragement uh, to Larry and just be a blessing to him. And I want to give you that opportunity now. Uh, you say, I don't have a lot of memories. Maybe you do, and you'd be... Uh, we'd certainly love to hear those. You, maybe you'd just like to sh you know, express your love and care for him. Uh, Who will be the first one uh, to go? All right, James. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Amen. Amen, amen. Yes, sir, please. We're anxious to hear. Yeah. Mm 
Amen. Larry's already told me, he said, Pastor, he said, for months and months, he, he said, I've sat and, and I've watched Linda because with her dementia, he couldn't really let her out of his sight. And I looked at him, I said, you've lost a lot of weight. He said, I've lost about 50 pounds. And uh, he said, I'm not as strong as I once was. And he said, I'm looking forward to being able to get out and get strong again and, and uh, be able to do. And, and uh, so, uh, yes, ma'am. Debbie, you want would you introduce yourself? Tammy.
Matthew 10. Yes, sir? Ask again. She had the nickname Ollie. Ollie, that was her nickname, huh? Okay. <laughs> Anyone else like to? Sh- yes, ma'am. Okay, so your neighbors, all right. I have heard that. Larry will pay for it. (laughs) Anyone else like to share words of encouragement or remembrances? Herb? Amen. Thank you, sir. Chuck? Amen. Amen. You, you all pray for Chuck, too. His dear wife is also suffering from dementia and is going through tough times. And uh, Chuck, Chuck's suffering as well. Yes, ma'am? <laughs> My kind of lady. <laughs> Who else? Yes, ma'am? Don't cry, Tammy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the mayors of 50 what is it 40 what? 
49th Lane and uh, Mayor McGalliard. Anybody <laughs> else? Yes, sir. Mike? Amen. Keep praying for Mike. And as he just said, uh, if you couldn't hear over here on this side, just three weeks ago, uh, Miss Nita passed. And so he's, he too is, has recently gone through what Larry's now going through. I saw another hand somewhere. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. I've never been to their home when it wasn't just immaculate. Absolutely. Yes, anybody else? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. The Hicks and the Smiths have been good friends to the to the McGalliards, and thank you for your friendship and your care and support. For Larry and Linda during this tough time. Anyone else? We have time. Larry asked that I would share with you all um, the gospel. The hope that we as Christians have in eternal life, and the resurrection of the body, 
It's all wrapped up in the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when God made this world, he made it perfect. There was no disease. There was no dementia. There was not even any death. God made this world absolutely perfect. And in this perfect world that he created, he placed two people, a man and a woman. God placed Adam and Eve in the perfect and beautiful Garden of Eden where they were allowed to eat of all of the fruit of the trees except of one tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But one calamitous day, the evil one, known as the devil, took on the form of a serpent and he went into the garden where Adam and his wife resided. And there the serpent tricked Eve into eating the forbidden fruit. He did so using lies about God and lies about what that fruit would do for her. So she ate, and the Bible says that she gave to her husband also, and he, he too did eat this forbidden fruit this, of this tree, the only tree they were not allowed to eat. And from that time forward, everything on planet Earth would be different. Mankind had sinned, and God had already promised the curse of death upon sin. Mankind would no longer be innocent. No longer free to walk with God in sweet fellowship in the garden. Mankind was now cursed. And with the curse upon mankind, a curse came upon all the earth as well. Because of mankind's sinful disobedience, mankind would face the same things or some of the things that he had never experienced. Things like disease and death. Also, mankind would face the same eternal torment to which Satan is doomed to face. That is the eternal separation from God, eternal damnation, torment in hell, and ultimately in a lake of fire. For God had made it very clear that the soul that sins, it must surely die. And now sinful mankind must face the same consequences as the deceiver himself. One day, all sinners will be cast, as the Bible says, into the lake of fire, which is called the second death. But God had a plan. God had a plan. And in his plan, God decided that, in, that God would himself take upon himself the consequences for mankind's sin. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8, God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God is a gracious and a loving God. He does not desire anyone to go to hell. And therefore, God made provision to atone for mankind's sinfulness. God, in his mercy and his grace, God took on the form of a human man and was miraculously born of a virgin. He lived 33 years in a, a sinless life. He died upon a cross, paying the price for mankind's sin, and he took upon himself the penalty for mankind's sin. I want to say this afternoon, what a loving and a gracious God is our God, the God of the Bible. That He would take our place by dying for the sin that we deserve to die and pay for ourselves. But not everyone believes in Jesus Christ. Not everyone believes that God came and died in our place. Not everyone believes that Jesus rose from the dead after three days. And sadly, though God has done all that he can, making a great provision for our sin, therefore not everyone will not receive the gift of eternal life, salvation freely offered by faith in Jesus Christ. You see, a person must believe and receive Jesus as their Savior to be saved from hell. A person must recognize and confess their sinfulness to God to be forgiven. They must agree with God that they, are a, that they are a sinner deserving of hell. And they must look to, to Jesus Christ in faith, believing that his death and resurrection from the dead was the complete payment for their sin if they're going to receive the gift of eternal life. The truth is, many, many people in this room, you've done that. You have received the gift of eternal life. You have trusted You've put your faith in 
Jesus Christ. Your sins have been forgiven. You're an adopted child of God. You know that you have an eternal home secured in heaven. You have no doubt that one day you will see Linda Cox McGalliard again. As we often say at funerals and memorial services and celebration services like this, it's not goodbye, it's I'll see you later. And the confidence and the hope that we have is not in our church membership, it's not in our religiosity, it's not in our morality or our being good people, but our hope is found only in Christ's death and resurrection from the dead. For he truly is the first fruits of the resurrection. Many here have made that decision. I ask you candidly, are you one of those persons? Have you put your faith in Jesus Christ? Have you trusted him as your only hope for heaven? I'll tell you now, if Linda could come back and give you one word of admonition, she would say, believe in Jesus. She has now experienced the glories of heaven. She has now experienced what it is to live a in a, in, a, in, a, in a circumstance without a body that's racked with pain, a mind riddled with, with dementia and disease, and she would say, you want what I now have. Have you put your faith in Christ? Have you trusted him as your only hope for heaven? I'm not asking you to join the church this afternoon. I'm not asking you to, to be a Baptist. I'm asking you, have you prepared for that day You see, one day, one day there'll be a service for you like this. One day there'll be a group of people who will gather and they'll remember your life. And they'll say nice things about you. And on that day, your body may be there, but you'll not be there on that day. You'll be in one of two places. You'll be with God the one who gave his own son who loved you enough to die on the cross or on that day you'll be in torments friend are you ready for that day are you ready for that day Larry and Linda would say please be ready for that day would you bow with me in prayer